Hey everyone, welcome back. All right, so here we are with Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagoras was a pretty interesting guy. He really liked right triangles, and he found an interesting pattern that pops up here. So with the right triangle, it's important to know the vocabulary. In a right triangle, there are gonna be two shorter sides. Those are called the legs. And then they've got the longest side that connects the legs, and it's called the hypotenuse. I always like to remember longest word, longest side. And that side will always be opposite the right angle. All right. So what he found was is that if he had the legs that were 3 and he made a square off of them, and then he had the other leg that was 4 and he made a square off of that, if he made a square off of the hypotenuse, the amount of boxes here plus the amount of boxes here always equaled the amount of boxes there. So that 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. If you add those together, you get 25. So there should be 25 boxes that come off here. And it was true every single time. So what he found was this very special formula that you've probably heard about, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It only works if you've got a right triangle. So here we are with a right triangle, and we know that the legs are 6 and 8. That is always A and B, and the hypotenuse is always C. So you plug them in. And remember, he took a square off this side, so you have to square the 6. He took a square off this side, that's why you have to square the 8. And that should equal the other side squared. So I've got 100 blocks off of this one. What two identical numbers multiply together get me 100? Well, if I take the square root of both, I get the answer of 10. And that's how it works. Okay. Why don't you guys see if you can figure this one out? All right. In this situation, notice it's not a perfect and nice number. Because what two identical numbers multiply to get you 89? Nobody actually knows. So when we take the square root, you could use a calculator or a chart, and you would get your answer, which would be about 9.434. Once again, when we add them together, feel free to use a calculator at this moment. What is the square root of 274? It's about 16.553. Now what happens if I have a number here for the hypotenuse? Well now that's C, so when I plug in my numbers, notice where it goes. Now I have to do a little bit of algebra to isolate the variable. And I take the square root, and once again, do not be afraid to use a chart or a calculator on this step. And the answer is about 9.746. And what happens if I give myself a square? Now you're going to think that this is going to be a hard one, but it's actually pretty easy. Because remember what happens when you take the square root of a number and you square it? It's the exact same number. Now when I subtract, I get a nice number. And the answer is 4. All right, so what if I gave you three numbers and I asked you, do these three sides make a perfect right triangle? Well, that would work if, when you square them, you get the exact same number. But notice in this situation, I don't. I get 74 equals 64. That's not true, so this is just not a right triangle. And remember, the 8 is the largest number, so it has to go in the hypotenuse spot. I'll let you guys try this one. Is this a right triangle? Hit pause if you want to. Okay, I'm back. When I square everything, I end up getting a true statement, so yes this would be a right triangle. All right, if you guys got questions, make sure to ask your teacher, and I will talk to you later.